As you're probably aware, our universe holds a lot of profound mysteries. But perhaps none is as elusive and as frustrating as the mystery of dark matter. And that's because based on a lot of different observations, scientists are pretty certain that dark matter seems to represent 85% of all matter in the entire universe. And so this bizarre hypothetical invisible material seems to be all over the place. It of course provides the necessary gravitational scaffolding for a lot of different galaxies and galactic clusters, and is also responsible for a lot of additional effects such as gravitational landing that you see in some of these images. As a matter of fact, one of the more recent, more incredible images coming out of the James Webb Space Telescope was the discovery of a lot more gravitational lenses and so-called Einstein rings, all of which show us the results from the dark matter effects on the light coming from distant galaxies. Yet because the dark matter itself does not interact with the light or any electromagnetic radiation, observing these gravitational influences seems to be the only way we know it's there. For example, by observing the famous bullet cluster, where visible gas is stripped away from the mass source that can only be explained as a massive chunk of dark matter, represents one of the main pieces of evidence for its existence. But for decades, researchers have also tried to find dark matter through various underground labs and very expensive experiments. But pretty much most of these experiments so far only had marginal effects and have not definitively discovered anything specific. Which is of course why we seem to have so many claims that maybe dark matter doesn't exist and maybe all of this can be explained in some other way. Yet despite of this, based on pretty much most of the observations out there, the evidence still suggests that it seems to be there. And one of the most powerful ways to track dark matter has always been through gravitational lensing. And so here imagine a really massive object, such as for example a huge cluster of galaxies. And it sits right between us and the distant light source. And the gravity from this cluster bends the light around it so much that it essentially turns everything into a kind of a lens. And so here, by analyzing precise way the light is distorted, stretched, and multiplied, researchers can accurately discover how much matter is required to produce this, and then of course compare it to the visual observations of what we see inside the cluster itself. And time and time again, researchers basically discover the same thing. The visible amount of matter cannot be possibly produced in this because the gravitational engine effects are ridiculously strong. And extremely recently, by using this method once again, scientists have discovered something they really didn't expect. A remarkable object representing an extremely low mass chunk of dark matter that, if confirmed, potentially challenges certain propositions and certain theories about what dark matter might be. And that's because by itself this object does not really make sense right now, for reasons we'll be discussing in this video. And so let's talk a little bit more about this, but first I actually wanted to mention something else from a very recent video. Today, most of the models involving dark matter suggest that all galaxies, including the Milky Way, are located inside a massive invisible halo that may resemble something like this. And here it's not composed of smooth dark matter, but instead seems to contain countless smaller clumps that we refer to as subhalos. These subhalos are essentially the gravitational chocolate chips scattered through the galactic cookie that helps hold everything together preventing stars and preventing everything else around the galaxy from falling apart. And while previously finding these subhalos was incredibly challenging, mostly because they're once again dark, they don't produce any light, and they're also pretty small in size. But in that one study we've discussed recently that should be in the description, a team of scientists used a lot of pulsars in the Milky Way galaxy to physically identify at least one of these subhalos not so far from planet Earth. And so this was actually a really important confirmation that subhalos seem to be real and our ideas about dark matter may be correct after all. Unless, of course, this is produced by some other massive invisible object, but intriguingly anything else, like for example a black hole, would actually be much more difficult to explain. And so this particular object was about 24 million solar masses in mass. And that's a lot more massive than the central black hole. And there was nothing visible in this region, so this mass anomaly could not be possibly explained by anything else. And this really important piece of evidence transformed the idea of dark matter from purely theoretical to something that we can now start mapping and even study right here in the Milky Way galaxy. And so this success highlighted the importance of using gravitational effects for detection of these very bizarre structures. But the recent study we're discussing today relied on a slightly different technique that obviously did not use pulsars, but potentially discovered something very similar. In this case, they once again looked at a gravitational lens, or an Einstein ring, 
but by accident also discovered something else inside of it. And so this new discovery focuses on a system known as JVS B1938 plus 666, a lens produced by an early type galaxy at a redshift of 0.8 that enhances a distant galaxy at a redshift of 2, with all of this creating the beautiful Einstein ring. So this is essentially what you're seeing right here. And here this distant light source is approximately 10 billion light years away from us, and so this is a pretty old galaxy we're looking at. And even the lens itself is pretty far too, at about 6.5 billion light years away. But interestingly in this case, the lens produces an extremely thin gravitational arc that's also visible in radio light, and that's what you see in yellow. And so when studying this tiny arc, completely by accident researchers discovered a strange anomaly. A tiny unusual flaw inside this arc, or a slight pinch in the image, that appears to have been caused by a second, much smaller mass lurking nearby. And so this small distortion seems to be the result of something else lurking near the main lens. And intriguingly, this small object, whatever this is, does not seem to emit any light in optical, infrared or radio wavelengths. It's essentially classified as a dark object, with all of this achieved by using very long baseline interferometry, linking various radio telescopes across the globe, including the Green Bank Telescope, the VLBA in Hawaii, and the European VLBI network. So essentially this formed a kind of a virtual Earth-sized radio telescope. And this was of course a very similar technique to what scientists used to produce the image of M87 black hole a few years back. And so because of this they were able to achieve phenomenal resolution. And so then by using a computer algorithm known as GI or gravitational imaging, they were able to successfully confirm the existence of this strange object. And the statistical significance for this detection was 26 sigma, which is much much higher than 5, that's usually required to show that something is definitely there. And so because of this level of precision, they were able to measure the size and the location of this object, confirming that there essentially seems to be nothing there in optical or other wavelengths. But more importantly, because this is a gravitational lens, we obviously know the mass of this object, and the inferred mass here is pretty large, 1.13 million solar masses. That's about one third of the mass of the central black hole in the Milky Way, or approximately 18 times less than the chunk of dark matter that I previously mentioned was discovered in the Milky Way. Whereas in terms of size of this object, it's approximately 250 light years across, but produces no light whatsoever. And so this was definitely something super strange. Although here, for astronomy, this is also a pretty big achievement because this is essentially a new milestone when it comes to measuring masses of objects and when it comes to discovering something super far away. This is the lowest mass object ever detected at a cosmological distance just by using gravitational effects, with the detection in this case essentially proving that this technique could be easily used to detect something similar at faraway distances, with this technique of gravitational imaging being excellent at probing distant massive objects even at the edges of the universe. But having said all this, okay, so what is this though? What exactly do scientists think it is and what explanations do we have? Well, the true answer is we don't actually know. Its true nature remains mysterious and completely unknown. But it could definitely be a clump of dark matter, such as the dark matter subhalo, similar to the one discovered in the Milky Way, but in this case, maybe about 10 to 20 times less massive. On the other hand, it could technically also be some kind of a barely visible dwarf galaxy, specifically an extremely compact and inactive dwarf galaxy, it's just impossible to detect. But based on the analysis, it cannot be a globular cluster or a black hole. And that's because both of them would produce different emissions and even different landing effects. Which basically just leaves us with these two potential choices. Either some kind of an ultra compact invisible dwarf galaxy or a clump of dark matter. And if this is a chunk of dark matter, it's essentially consistent with the expected number of subhalos predicted by various models and directly aligns with foundational theories that explain formation of galaxies. In other words, in terms of theories and predictions, right now scientists are definitely leaning toward dark matter explanation more so than a dwarf galaxy. But the story does get a little bit more complicated when looking at the internal structure of the object itself, because the mass profile analysis also reveals unusual concentration that's very different from what's predicted or essentially the density of this object does not seem to match what was predicted previously, which might suggest that dark matter particles are not what we initially thought, and specifically they might not be cold, or basically that they don't really move that slow compared to the speed of light, and may instead actually move much faster, and thus contain more energy. 
with the study essentially suggesting that the dark matter particles may either be self-interacting or possess way more energy than anticipated. But ultimately, this type of research using gravitational lensing to map these tiny mass fluctuations is one of the most powerful observational tests we currently have to try to understand this strange phenomenon. And so by finding more similar objects and by discovering additional clumps, some of the future studies might determine what this is all made out of and possibly guiding us toward the discovery of the actual particle or the actual phenomenon that produces all of this. And that means that we may have just entered a new era for dark matter research that despite still being an ultimate cosmic mystery, may now be just a little bit easier to solve because we have additional ways to find it. We have these very precise gravitational landing observations and can even use pulsar timing to find chunks of dark matter right here in the Milky Way. Either way, whatever this subject is, I guess we'll only find out in a few months or maybe a year or so, once there are some additional observations and once there are some additional discoveries. For now though, this is just going to remain a kind of a mystery and some kind of a really bizarre massive anomaly, approximately 6.5 billion light years away from us. But it's the discoveries like this that represent a testament to the relentless curiosity and drive scientific discoveries even further. And so I definitely cannot wait to hear more about this and to find out what this potentially is. Either way, we'll definitely come back and talk about dark matter or additional gravitational anomalies in some of the future videos. And until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership that grants you early access and additional secret videos. You can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.